Welcome to our latest episode of Tide and Talks. This week, we are joined by Pete Bergstrom, field representative at Tide and Brooks. Pete, thanks so much for joining us today on the podcast. It's great to have you. Thanks for the uh, invite, Jeremy. I'm glad our listeners like listening to supply chain security issues as much as I like working with them. Absolutely. Same here. And, you know, as you and I have been speaking over the, the past few weeks, uh, I've been really looking forward to hearing about a number of the initiatives that you're working on in your territory. But before we dig in on, on those solutions, you know, it'd be great if we could share details of your background and your uh, return to Titan Brooks. So um, as, as for background and how I got into SEALs, I'm a, a former Army Logistics Officer I had a lot of physical security and property accountability duties. I worked with the military police. So uh, I've uh, applied, recorded, and opened more than my fair share of SEALs. Uh, personally, I always liked using them in the service. Um, padlocks never told me when the key holders, whether they were supposed to have the key or not, got in and out of the containers. So whereas the SEAL did, the um, Army sealed everything that they wanted to be sure uh, was there when they needed it. And the SEALs kept pretty much everything intact. Yeah, I found plenty of broken ones during my career, but uh, we usually found the offending party and um, were able to fix whatever was missing or just plain rifled through in the container. I implemented a couple of SEAL programs at units I served with. They worked really well. Nobody wanted to break a SEAL. When the uh, seal numbers were um, being checked, they kept a lot of honest people honest. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I know what you mean. It's that um, that tamper evidence uh, that you know security seals provide that other uh, security elements like a pad, a keyed padlock, necessarily wouldn't provide. And you know your background, interesting and, and very diverse. You know clearly that ties in really well with your logistics experience with a lot of our customers. Uh, you know allows you to sort of be in their mindset and understand their challenges you know, on a daily basis. And you know I was thinking to that, could you maybe share the state you cover for the listeners, and you know then we can maybe dive into some security solutions. Maybe there's some unique ones you'd like to cover today. Yeah, sure. Um, like you said, I'm a field rep for uh, Titan Brooks. I cover the U.S. Great Lakes and uh, Northeast. Um, so pretty much uh, Illinois and Michigan, with the exclusion of uh, like Ohio and some other states, all the way over to New York and Maine. Um, I travel for Titan Brooks and um, I work with customers uh, who want to improve, you know, like reduce shrink and improve their security using seals. I carry a lot of samples when I travel. Uh, nothing easier in trying to find the right seal for your application than having everything Titan Brooks makes right in front of you to try to try all of them. As for applications, trailers and dry goods uh, containers I've always found interesting. Lots of different containers, uh, access doors and uh, to protect with bolts and cables. You know, you can use higher security seals as the uh, load value increases and the routes that the containers traveling become more dangerous. Uh, carriers tell me they've seen uh, a decent increase in theft the last couple of years. Uh, that shippers once uh, sent them unlocked, carriers are now required to be secured. And if not secured, the uh, carrier's insurance doesn't pay out the claim. So, for um, customers out there, whether you're loading a container with uh, pharmaceuticals or just furniture, it's always good to uh, check with your carrier and consignee as to how they want their loads shipped and sealed. Personally, uh, after the service, I shipped and received plenty of loads. Uh, I had them all sealed. They so it solved a lot of shortage and load locating problems when I when I couldn't find out where a load was at. I've seen a lot of cable seal increase on trailers as the uh, most petty criminals don't carry cable cutters to remove cables and bolt cutters don't work well on them and seen a lot of uh, seals being applied higher on the keeper bars on containers as that makes the thief bring a ladder to seal too. So by the time this all occurs, the uh, criminals just given up and gone into another container. Uh, personally, I like 
carriers uh, seen an increase in barcodes, QR codes, and even customers changing their lettering and numbering to make cloning a seal real hard. You know, nothing worse than having uh, the ability to order a to order a seal that matches the ones that a company's using. So, Titan Brooks is good at locking that down and allows users to control and change their seal seal numbers, make it hard for criminals to uh, replace the seal they break. And the great thing about Titan Brooks is they always make it easier to get those at manufacturer direct pricing and uh, quantities, 1,000, 5,000 pieces. So um, rail cars and tankers are also interesting. You know, their theft isn't usually a, pro a problem. It's um, contamination and poisoning. It's, um, it's always been good to see how well the American food industry uh, currently secures their loads as nobody wants the ingredients spoiled or contaminated. And lastly, um, container sealing, whether totes, drums, sacks, bins, or canisters, uh, sealing these applications, whether it's with an asset protection person in the warehouse, um, are also very interesting because a lot of thought has to go into a quick uh, application of the seal so you can keep the throughput good when they're packing totes with merchandise. And again, barcodes, RFID, and GPS have really come into play the last last couple of years for these carriers to um, track damage, temperature, and um, even real time when containers are getting opened up. Absolutely, and you know, I agree with you. You know, the barcoding uh, it speeds up you know productivity, uh, also makes it harder though for people to you know try to duplicate the security seal. It's that layered security approach that we take that I think, you know, sort of sets us apart. We can offer, you know, several different layers. And as you say, you can, you can change colors, you can alphanumeric and make it even unique and then change it again. And, and I think it's that thinking out of the box, as you say, that's that valuable uh, industry knowledge that we carry being around for, you know, 150 years. So, you know, your insights are are well taken. I'm sure listeners uh, will appreciate that. Um, I'm just looking here. I'm thinking. I figure we, we might want to mention this: is that I see you're you're in Boston next week, I believe, for the National uh, Tank Truck Carriers Trade Show. I, I think it's at the Encore Boston Harbor. It is. Uh, we were invited and are exhibiting. Um, the interesting thing with uh, tanker security is uh, it's it's less about theft, but more about chain of custody. You know, uh, shippers will often specify what seals they use, but if not, uh, the, ultimately the consignee does. They want to know when the container is sanitized, that it's sealed up and uh, stays clean while it's awaited filling. Once it gets filled, those seals are broken and it's filled, and the seal ensures that the containers stay pure. Then when it gets to the uh, consignee, they want to break the seals to ensure that the con uh, contents weren't contaminated. So for them, it's the ability to find uh, seals for their part of the handling of that container load. And, uh, we're looking forward to meeting some of the, um, some of the, some of the shippers and show them just how easy it is to, um, get the seals they need. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I see your, I think it's booth, uh, 213 you're at. And, you know, if somebody wants to reach out to you in advance, um, maybe you want to share your phone number, you know, right now we can get that out there. Maybe somebody's going to go or in the area or maybe they're in the industry and can't attend and would just like to reach out to you. Oh, sure. My number is 312-945-1176. Outstanding. Well, look, thanks, Pete. I know you got to head out to different meetings, so I, I can't steal you for too long. But as always, a terrific discussion and you know, I look forward to future podcasts where we can share uh, with other companies how we can make them more secure and more productive. I appreciate the chat, Jeremy. Excellent. And uh, to our listeners, you know, kindly follow our podcast on your favorite platforms. If you wish to learn more about Titan Brooks, we're on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And also, please take a moment to review our websites at TitanBrooks.com and TitanBrooks.uk. Brooks.uk.